Hello, and welcome back to my video series showcasing MNT 2.0. I'm Demi and Sky. This week, I thought I'd try something a little bit different and something I think you guys will think is pretty fun. Instead of showing you a specific feature you can expect to see in MNT 2.0, I thought I'd instead run a test game and then record it and show you the results. That way, you can see all of the uh, interesting new features that are in the game um, all at once and see them in action. Uh, and that will also give me an opportunity to check for bugs and, and things of that nature as well, as well as examine balance. Um, because while a lot of the other team members and beta testers have had a chance to play the game, ironically, I haven't really had that much opportunity because I've just been coding most of the while. So this will be a fun little diversion for me. So I've decided to play the Emirate of Granada, my favorite com country. And one of the reasons it's my favorite country is because it's an interesting little historical anomaly, um, being the one small uh, Islamic uh, holdout in the Iberian Peninsula. And not only was it an interesting holdout, but it also was interesting economically in that it was really uh, very prosperous and very advanced given the time. Even though they were this, they were this tiny little, uh, tiny little country, and with MNT 2.0, we can finally see a lot of that interesting resolution associated uh, with that economic excellence that existed in history. And so, let's take a look at the fundamentals I have to work with with Granada uh, in the case of 2.0. So, Granada is one of the larger cities in Europe, the city of Granada itself, and you can see that it has 120,000 people living here. And if we compare it to other major cities on the peninsula, like Toledo, which has 50,000, uh, Barcelona, which has 40,000, uh, Lisbon, which has 50,000, and Seville, which has 80,000, Granada really stands, as, stands out as a fairly large pillar of urbanization. And even its uh, favored port city of Malacca is, is quite large as well. So Granada is easily the most urban country on the peninsula at game start. And not only that, but it's also a center of a lot of economic activity. And if we look at the trade map mode here, we can see that um, Granada is the largest city on the subcontinent. There's a few of the other large cities like Lisbon have the bronze rating, largest regional city. Toledo has largest regional city. Um, and then Granada also has uh, an important center of trade modifier. It starts out the game with the largest center of trade modifier in Iberia. We see Seville has a minor center of trade. Lisbon has minor center of trade. Valencia has minor center of trade. And then it also has an important center of production as well because it produces the most urban goods on the peninsula as well. Um, and keep in mind, I didn't set any of these modifiers. These were procedurally generated at game start. Um, and every 10 years, they are regenerated based on who has the strongest economic fundamentals. And those economic fundamentals were procedurally generated as well. Like you can see, uh, Granada produces 10 silk. Uh, Cordoba produces 5 luxury cloths. Seville, 7 silk. Right. So Granada had the most silk, therefore it got the best center of production modifier available uh, on, the, uh, on the subcontinent. And what's more, Granada had the largest trade power too, which um, looks like they're tied with Seville, but I guess Granada got it. Um, and so they end up with the uh, important center of trade as well. Um, and Granada, as was the case historically, is also a really, really difficult nut to crack. It's a capital, it has city fortifications level 2, and it has a fort, which means that an invading army needs 12,000 soldiers just to siege the province. Um, so Granada itself is, the city itself is very powerful. And we can see over in Almira, we have uh, a mine which is producing iron, which is fairly profitable. Um, and then Malacca is the port city with decent trade and has uh, some linen production as well. We can see throughout Andalusia, um, 
there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on. So all these little icons represent the industry that's, that's currently there. The white icons represent mundane goods, which are the least valuable. Um, blue represents uh, a mid-level tier. Purple represents high quality. Um, and the quality of a given urban good depends on uh, how much how much production skill is is being generated there. And so. The more robust your industry becomes, the more able you're, you are to produce higher value luxury goods. And End Lucia is very, very productive at game start, but um, it tends to get torn apart by a lot of religious wars and civil wars and things like that. So anyway, I started out with a pretty good income. Um, this is actually, believe it or not, about half the income of the crown of France. Uh, so Granada starts out very rich, if, uh, if somewhat low on manpower. It's also very centralized, too, so you have a lot of control over, over the various uh, parts of your society. Um, the bourgeoisie tend to uh, dominate as far as their power and influence because they're present in both Malak and Granada, which are the most powerful cities. And so we can see that the bourgeoisie have a decent income, uh, and they have a decent number of ducats saved up. And we have the lesser nobility as well, who have a decent treasury and, and decent income. Um, but uh, they only have one infantry as part of their levies currently, so they're not very useful in warfare. Better than nothing, though. Granada also starts out with really good education. Just about some of the highest education in the world, in fact. Except for some of the university towns you'll find in, in, uh, in Italy. Uh, they start out with a pretty good endowment. But unless I continue to fund education, uh, then my education will continue to, to decline. We can see that um, the education in Granada is good, which gives a lot of really handy benefits. And we also have a good development level, too, which also gives numerous benefits as well. So Granada is a very compact, high-quality society, uh, which punches far above its weight. Um, and... At game start, I'm going to have to declare a war on Castile to break free. So I'm going to need some, some good stability. And unfortunately, or interestingly, I should say, uh, you can't just spam a stability button to increase your stability anymore. Instead, you gain points, as you saw in an earlier video, over time. And so it's very difficult to get to three stability. And when you're in a hole, it can be difficult to dig yourself out when it comes to stability. What I can do in the meantime, though, is I can offer favors and privileges to my estates uh, to help them to stabilize my regime. I'm going to offer the bourgeoisie some cabinet positions, which increases corruption. I'm going to bestow some privileges. I'm going to make them my principal court supplier. Hurts my national tax modifier, but and hurts my yearly corruption, but it does help with urban production. Gives loyalty and stability points. Um, and I'm going to heap some goodies on my nobles too because I'm going to need this loyalty when uh, when I declare a war too because I'm going to get them to help me I'm going to give a uh, nobles criminal court okay so first order of business is I want to try to get the various other Muslim uh, sultans and emirs on my side so that they can help me um, break free of Castile. You can see here that, um, unfortunately, I can't declare a war right away because I have a truce with Castile. And that is due to the fact of the events that occurred before game start, where the Marinids teamed up with Granada in an attempt to reclaim the Emirate of Seville. They failed, obviously. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take advantage of the War of Two Peters, which is currently in effect. Um, if it's devastating enough, it should weaken Castile maybe pry a few allies away from them. And if I can get the support of some of the other uh, Muslim emirates and sultans that should allow me to break free, uh, and the inertia of my good national fundamentals should help with that as well. So I'm going to come back once I'm ready to go to war, and then uh, I'll show you some of the other features uh, related with warfare in my test game. All right, so here we are a few years later. Um, things didn't really go as well as I had hoped. Um, I don't know if I'm going to win or not. The only reason I'm 
gonna keep going and not re-roll is because um, I got some pretty good generals from my leaders. So I'm gonna stick with it. The reason it isn't going so good is because no one supported my independence. Instead, they decided to all fight each other, all of the other sultans and, and emirs. So I'm gonna go it alone. Uh, on the upside, the War of Two Peters is still going on, so it's draining Castile a bit. But um, it's probably going to end too. Uh, excuse me, it's going to end pretty soon. So I'm going to be fighting alone against Castile and their ally. And they have Genoa on their side, and so Genoa has a big fleet and lots of troops, so they will likely blockade me and invade navally. So it's going to be a difficult fight. But I think I might be able to pull it off. Um, first order of business, let me get that claim on Seville. And make any last minute preparations. Um, <clears throat> we can see I took a number of policies to improve my stability because I'm going to take a huge hit once I declare independence. Um, you can see I took level one minor state reform, level two minor state reforms. Um, you can take a number of policies to improve your stability over time rather than just spamming a button. And the more policies you take, you see the more they have diminishing returns. And they can get pretty expensive if you take them frivolously. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and declare a war. Pretty big hit there. Let's get my war exhaustion down and let me check my stability. Um. Okay, so next census tick, I'll get one. The threshold will go down to 100 now that I have negative stability, so I should get a stability fairly soon. Um, I can appropriate church property. Um, okay. Next step is I will go to my estates and beg and plead for them to, uh, to help me. Hit the bourgeoisie first since... They're pretty powerful in my country. They generally don't like to go to the war, but um, you can get lots of financial-related stuff from them. They don't have their own army, so you can't bum any troops off them. But I can get financial support, so every year they'll give me 6.5 ducats. I'll take that. And of course, they'll be angry every time they hand over those, those bags of money. I'll take some logistical support, and I'll take some war relief. And this is probably one of the more powerful uh, assistance items they have that they can give to me. Um, so I'll take that. If they were a much weaker estate, then the effects would be much weaker. So in most countries, bourgeoisie only have 10% uh, of the land and 10% influence. So I would only get 0 0.01 instead of 0 0.05. So I'll take that. Next, I go to my lesser nobles. Um, because... They are patriotic, and because nobles tend to be more enthusiastic about war, they'll give me two, two picks. So I will take <laughs> their one infantry regiment they have to offer. You can see they're raising that levy now. Once the war is over, they'll take that, that regiment back. And then I will bolster the defenses, which is super handy, because Granada is already a really, really difficult nut to crack. Um, you can see even in Malak, which is the you know, second city of Granada, they have city fortifications and a medieval castle. Um, so let's do it. Oh, I got some stability. Okay. I think I'm going to split my army. Loot policy. Okay, so I have to choose how I'm going to loot. Um, if I strongly encourage looting, it's good for war exhaustion. It's good for loot speed. Loot speed means more loot. Um, the only problem is it uh, it makes the soldiers more likely to run around the countryside looting, which hurts, hurts siege ability, and it damages discipline. Of course, the other big problem is if I choose to loot the crap out of Andalusia. Um, then when I capture it, 
or at least parts of it, is going to be very damaged because I looted the crap out of it. So, on the other hand, I could restrict looting. If I restrict looting, I get some bonuses to discipline, negatives to morale. Um, it's good when you're fighting a purely defensive war or you want to spare the landscape. Um, but I don't think I can take the morale penalty or the monthly war exhaustion penalty, so I'm just going to go with the median setting. Let me slow things down just in case Castile comes charging in. Um, okay. I'm going to leave my fleet moored there. Hopefully the War of Two Peters, the first phase of it, will continue on for a while so that I can get a little bit of sieging done. Uh -oh. Okay, good, that's Aragon. I will lead that pogrom personally because persecution, woot. Main reason is because I want that stability. And the piety. Did I get it? Did I get it? Yes, I did. Maybe I can... Can I give some goodies out? No, okay. You can't spam favors on your on your estate. You can only do it every few years. So when you do end up in a pretty big hole, loyalty wise or stability wise, you can't just you know get a whole bunch real a whole bunch of stability or loyalty real fast. Um, ooh, looks like Castile got their butts kicked by Aragon. Thanks, guys. Oh, and Aragon is oh well, they were blockading for me. I don't want them to actually take Cordoba because I want it. So I probably have a few months before Castile comes back. Oh, wait. Okay, they're still gone. Thought maybe they'd pieced out. Um, I thought I had new decisions. Conquer Mercia. Well, I'm not going to war with Trastamar anytime soon, so no thanks. We'll just cancel it though, because why not? I'm hoping pretty soon I should be able to tech up militarily because I have better tech bonuses than than anyone else on the peninsula, so I should be able to get there first. Yes, walls breached. Ah, disease. It's no fun. And, oh no, they're just at war with me now, which means they're gonna come for me soon. Ah, disease outbreak. No, no! Here they come. Alright, so you can see they went to Malak. It's Fort Knox there, pretty much, so I'll finish the siege way before they do, unless I get more diseases. Food shortage, that's why I like to see. Supply shortage, that's good too. And you can see it's so, it's such powerful. Uh oh, they're on the move. And they're going for me. So I'm gonna leave one person behind. Ooh, outnumbered. But you can see I have much better discipline. So I should win this. Casualties. Yeah, I inflicted way more casualties. Better general. Okay. So I don't even have the troops to finish out that siege up there yet. So hopefully I'll be able to. F Another disease outbreak, really? Okay, states are helping. Um, does not give me enough money to raise any new troops. Contemplating taking out a loan, but I guess I'll just reinforce. Yeah, stability. Now you'll see that um, reinforcement costs way more um, than it did in previous versions of the game. Um, 
And that's because fighting wars cost a lot of money, not just having troops around. Uh, oh, there we go again. I don't want to give up that siege, though. I was so close to capping it. Money. Fine. Almost attempt, almost tempted to attack him there, just because I can raise the levies or raise the uh, garrison. Yeah, let's go for it. Every troop I can get. So let's go. Alright, should win. Yep, they fled. I'm really terrified what's going to happen with Genoa. 43%, you can do this. Capture something so I can... Aha, okay, good. Alright, so you'll see now. Captured Cadiz, took a little bit of damage, but not a lot, because um, it's a core. It's the uh, same culture, and it has a large uh, Sunni Muslim min minority, so it didn't do that much damage. You'll also see here in the loot pool... I took 218 ducats worth of loot from Cadiz. Some of that was from infrastructure, some was from the loot pool. You can see uh, it looks like it was diminished pretty significantly. Um, and Seville has a pretty big pile of ducats too and a lot of infrastructure, so I'll probably loot a lot from there too. Um, the army currently is carrying all the money and the loot train is going back to the capital gradually. And the more I get weighed down, the more penalties I'll start to take. Let's continue. Sure, go ahead. More disease outbreaks, really? Come on. Come on. Ah, great. Looks like Genoa landed some troops. Need to finish this dang siege. Come on. Okay, got it. And Castile is dumb and did not help their allies. Boom. Dead. So I'm going to take a chance. Try and stack wipe over here. Toast. Oh, just in time for military tech. Oh no. Oh, disease, finally. Okay, so. I win this battle. Okay, good. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the video and start up once I've hopefully won this war, or gotten toward the end, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so we're back now. Um, it was a long and difficult war. Um, you can see my army is whittled down. I'm really far in debt. Um, my war score is really high because just the constant, constant battles. We're dancing around in circles and uh, try and lure them onto my fort so they could, you know, attrition down a bit, and then I'd counterattack, and I managed to force Genoa out of the war. <laughs> well, not really force, more like bribe them. Um, and then they finally left, and then as soon as they left, Trastamara found their chance to re-enter the War of the Two Peters. So now I'm in a race to try and siege down as much as I can and loot as much as I can 
so that I can get favorable peace terms and a nice big pot of, of loot to work with to pay off my debts. You can see here that this is the loot that's been taken so far. It looks like a lot, but remember that um, a lot of this is going to go to the soldiers um, and to the estates who contributed. So a lot, a lot of that loot will end up going back to my country in the provinces and stuff like that, and only some of it will make it to my treasury. So it's not as much as it looks like, is what I'm trying to say. I'd like to try and get to Toledo before Trastamar, but I doubt it. Because there's lots of uh, infrastructure there to loot. Of course, there's a call for peace too, so I'm going to have to peace out pretty, pretty soon anyway, or just end up racking up too much war exhaustion. And it's a good opportunity to show you the kind of damage that, that's done in warfare. Again, it's a Catholic province, which means it'll get hit pretty hard by the looting. So there's uh, there's about 10,000 people there, or 100,000 people there in the province. Let's go speed things up a bit. Okay, so we successfully capped it. Um, that was a bit harsher than I thought it would be. Um, all right, so let's split up here. Oh, not enough people because city fortifications. Mm, maybe I'm gonna try and follow the loot here. Condoba is nice, but it it's already been looted. So I'm going to go for Bahadas, because there's a silver mine there, which has been building up a lot of local wealth. And then Huelva hasn't been touched by any of the wars of the Two Peters or anything like that. So it's another good place to hit. Other than that, there's not that much available to loot. Lusain has been looted. That's Trust Mars, anyway. So... Take those two provinces, see what we get. And then, oh, uh, just out of curiosity, I'm going to see what I have available as far as peace terms are concerned. Not bad. Good, I don't want to fight them anyway. All right, loot, loot, loot. And my state is still shelling out money. They probably hate me now. It's because every time they donate some cash, I lose some loyalty. I might as well attempt to blockade. Just in case Trastamara lifts their blockade, no! Piece, but I really want their loot. Although if I don't succeed soon, I may have to just call it because yeah, it's going up way too fast. It's like they're being completely sieged on all sides, but they decide to go after my piddly little army. Yeah, they're getting hit hard by Trastamara. Problem is, once I peace out, Castile's going to unify. I'm hoping I might be able to get an alliance with Aragon, since they are rivals. There's no diplomatic reputations. Darn. I have so much loot, I'm getting negative modifiers. Come on, cap that biatch. This is my siege general, so this will cap first, I'm sure. And I've 
I've got such low manpower, I have a peasant's war on the way. Great. Okay, got it. Maybe pushing this a little too far, but... Uh, over a thousand ducats in the loot pool, so that should leave me with a good bit. Blockade, go to safety, little fleet. Yeah, I was outnumbered the entire war, pretty much. They just had to rely on superior generals and superior soldiers. Oh, disease outbreak, really? Come on. Version? No, I don't want to waste the money. Oh, and I'm sieging the wrong province. Oh, stupid me. Oh, that's dumb. Is it even worth it? I guess so. Oh, come on. Okay, their defenses are so low now, it's gonna chain, it's gonna chain cap. Just in time. Okay, anything else that's worth it now that their defenses are super low? Yeah, there's no way I'm taking the capital. Yeah, it looks like their wealth is pretty much wiped out. You can see they have so few ducats just because the War of the Two Peters just wiped out all the wealth in the area. If I ever went to war with Portugal, there's a lot more wealth floating around, it looks like. And Aragon, too. Okay. So I guess... Time to peace out? Yeah, I guess so. Let's see what I can get. Don't want anything on the border with another country that's going to piss them off. Um, I mean, it's tempting to grab El Condabo, but the money would also be nice. And I should take whatever I can get. All right. Now we have the spoils of war. So you can see, if I take nothing, uh, I take a tenth of the loot pool, and then the rest of it goes to the soldiers. And they'll actually take that home, all that, all that money home, and they'll invest it on their farms and increase farming efficiency. And some will take it home to the city and try to build new, add to the city loot pool or the wealth pool. Um, if I take more for the crown, that's less for them, but more for me. But you can see that it can piss off the soldiers and even hurt stability. Um, I'm thinking I should take that chance, though, because now that I'm independent, I it's going to be me against the world, and I need as much money as possible. We're core, core, core. Um, try to stave off the awful things that are on the way. Pretty advanced, though. That's the good part. And, of course, my aggressive expansion screwed up my chance at an alliance. Oh, well. So, now it's on to recovery for me. Um, fortunately, it looks like I've... I'll be able to get an alliance. Oh, great. Alliance is across the board. So, if I can build up a fleet, I should be able to get some help from across the strait if I get attacked by anybody else. Once Castile unites, I'm going to be in for a lot of trouble. Anyway, um, I'll start up the video again once I am recovered and show you where we stand. As you can see, actually before we go, uh, you can see Seville was fought over quite a bit. Um, a lot of the population was destroyed or fled. Um, 
there used to be a merchant's guild here, now there's only a marketplace because it was destroyed. Part of the loot that I brought back home came from, you know, the value that was locked away in the buildings. And so Seville was downgraded pretty substantially, so was Cordoba. Cities in general tend to be um, vulnerable. Anyway, uh, I'll see you guys in a bit then, um, as soon as I'm recovered. One quick detail. Um, well, this is right after the war, and I thought I'd show you what happens um, when you fight over a lot of territory frequently. You can see here that um, province trauma was added to the province, and that um, prevents the province from rebounding population uh, right away. You can see 10 years it's going gonna, it's gonna to take to remove province from this trauma, uh, five years from this province. So... Um, you know, it really takes a good period of peace and prosperity in order to really bring back um, a province from being looted and damaged. And as long as this province trauma lingers, the more likely a famine is to come in and afflict the entire region. And that could be pretty bad if that happens. Okay, so I wasn't expecting to go to war this soon um, unless someone declared on me. But it looks like a war of unification is on between Castile, Portugal, and Aragon. So, if that unification went ahead, that would be disastrous. And so Castile needs to lose. And aside from that, I can use this opportunity to try to permanently weaken, well not permanently, but for the next 20 or 30 years, weaken Castile substantially. And so... I don't have a lot of troops. I'm relying mainly on mercenaries. Um, but I think I could have an opportunity to make a daring move. And if I pick uh, strongly encouraged looting, um, then I'll do significant damage to all of Castile's holdings and severely, severely weaken them well into the future in addition to bring home lots and lots of loot. Um, so I haven't quite figured out what I'm settling on. Um, I think I'm probably going to go with Super Loot. That way I can reclaim most of Andalusia in addition to severely damaging Castile. And that should give me a chance to build up enough power to be, a, uh, to be able to build up a fleet and permanently be able to resist the... Christians on the Iberian Peninsula. So I'm going to go with Strongly Encouraged Loot. And I'm going to go back to my states. Uh, get more support. Ooh. They offer sufficient, uh, significantly more support now that I have more territory with burgers. And because autonomy is high in those provinces, most of the money is going to the... Uh, um, going to the estate in the province and so they should be able to help me a lot during the war so I'm going to do everything I can and yeah anyway I'll see you guys after the war then okay so as you can see war is going really well um, I managed to get a really crushing uh, victory on in, during one of the battles um, and from there, it's been pretty easy, especially since Portugal and Aragon are participating very heavily now. So now, it's officially gotten to the point where I'm trying to cripple Castile as much as possible. And with max loot, I mean, my soldiers have completely ravaged the countryside, which, I mean, is nice because I've got lots and lots of loot already, and I haven't even, I haven't even finished looting. Um, the downside is that when I begin to take some of these provinces, um, it's going to mean that they're extremely weak. They've suffered a lot of trauma. Most of their infrastructure has been destroyed. Um, and then as I loot the rest of the countryside here, what's going to happen is the entire subcontinent is going to have significantly less trade power and less um, urban production. And what that's going to do is it's going to turn the entire subcontinent into more of a backwater 
and there's going to be fewer centers of trade, fewer centers of production. So even though I'm just hurting my enemies here, the entire subcontinent tends to share, um, to share. Uh, how do I say this? The center, of, the centers of trade and production. The amount the subcontinent gets is based on the entire value of the subcontinent. And so, if there was lots of uh, production power and trade power all through the subcontinent, and I had tons and tons and tons of Andalusia in, in Andalusia, then all of the trade centers would be attracted here, and I would be benefiting from the rest of the subcontinent. And so when I go on a looting rampage, and I burn everything to the ground, and I take it all as loot, um, it's nice in the short run in the sense that it gives me loot and it hurts my enemies, but it makes it so that economic growth for everyone on the subcontinent is hurt long term. Um, but, you know, that's a risk I'm willing to take because um, I really just need Castile to be um, rolling around in pain at the moment. This looks kind of weird that I'm running all the way over here to Biscay, but you can see there's a nice big pile of ducats there. Uh, because that's one of the few virgin <laughs> places left, including uh, Crunia up here. I'm sieging down. So I'm going to head over here. Oh, crap. Um, uh, so that's why it's still got loot. That's where everybody runs. Um, Alright, change of plans. I don't have enough troops to take him safely. So I'm gonna wait till I siege down northern Castile, then I'll move on to this guy. Pretty much oh god, my manpower is zero again. Ugh. Haven't taken any loans, I don't think, which is good. So I'm in good shape. Um, every so often I can request manpower from the lesser nobles. I've already done that. I don't need to bolster my defenses, obviously. Just about capped out everything I have to offer the bourgeoisie. My corruption's already so high because I've given them so many cabinet positions. I don't know if I want to keep going that way. I'm almost tempted just to give them some more privileges. Like a monopoly on court supplies, but uh, if I gave him a decade of self-rule, that would jack autonomy through the roof because I have so many bourgeoisie. All day on foreign coin. I don't know if I... I've already got super high inflation. Damn it, I guess it's corruption then. I'm also the only one with artillery, so... What I did was I lured Castile's fairly large army into a into the highlands um, and then attacked, and so it was a very narrow combat width, and my artillery just mowed them down. Yes, I will accept the royal marriage. Um, Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna take him to a hundred percent, even if it runs me into debt, and then I'm gonna try and release uh, maybe Leon or Galicia, and then try and ally him, and hopefully that should give me a strong enough presence on the peninsula that I should be able to withstand war with some of the other powers here. Thinking about even though I want to reunite Andalusia, I don't want to border with Aragon, so we're gonna have to see how that goes. Anyway, see you back in a bit once the war... Okay, so I need to end this thing quick because uh, Peasant's Revolt is taking hold in Castile. My war exhaustion's getting real high. I've got looming disasters. Um, as far as loot is concerned, bringing home quite a bit. Um, I've done a huge amount of economic damage all over... Castile, a famine is has taken hold in over half the country. Um, I feel uh, just a little bit bad about that. I'm not gonna lie. Um, so 
I mean, the good news is that I severely weakened Castile, and they're not going to be a, a viable rival of mine for quite some time. Um, the downside of that is that basically it actually hurts the prosperity of uh, Andalusia uh, because it's part of the subcontinent of Iberia, and a, each subcontinent shares its urban production power and trade power for the purpose of generating centers of production and centers of trade. So when the census event rolls around to recalculate centers of production and trade, a lot of them are going to more than likely disappear um, in certain places. And I could even get downgraded here at Granada because the entire subcontinent as a whole becomes becomes a backwater the more you loot it and damage it and the more that plague or famine hurts. So since Castile is now at about half population after a civil war, war of two Peters, war of unification, and war against me and famine, um, bad things are probably going to happen economically for me back at home. But the upside is I no longer have to worry about um, you know, being destroyed and dismantled by a powerful Castile. So they'll be a backwater for 30 years or so. So I'm going to go ahead. And, um, the thing I was really shooting for was to be able to release um, t to release Galicia so that I can have an ally in the area. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and kill these peasants just so that Galicia has nothing to worry about. And then boink, I'm going to go ahead and kill the last Castilian soldiers so they can't fight back. Um, then I'm going to make peace. So releasing Galicia. I'm really conflicted about taking territory. I guess technically I'm bordering, yeah, I'm bordering Aragon anyway. It's probably a bad idea, but take the territory while I can. And then grab as much cash as possible. And we should be good. Good times roll. And now we have spoils of war. Um, almost tempted just to give it back to my economy to jumpstart it. But uh, I do have to worry about the war with Aragon and Portugal now. So two-fifths it is. I'll take the stability risk. Okay, I'm good. All right, so <laughs> Toledo used to be 50,000 people. It's been sacked numerous times. It lost its center of production. It's going to lose its special, um, its special urban urban resource here it's going to turn white um, so yeah Castile's hit pretty hard hopefully I'll be able to retain most of uh, most of my uh, modifiers as well so I think we're due for a plague so Spain may not uh, have seen the last of its abuse I'll start the video again when we have to deal with that all right, the plague cometh. Did not have to wait long. It's just been like one year. Um, and this is especially bad because I have a lot of centers of trade, and that tends to be where plague tends to jump to. Um, and you can see stability is hard to come by now in, in M&T 2.0. Um, it's really, really, really easy to lose stability and really difficult to gain it. Um, and when plague rolls through, if you get hit real bad, then then uh, it's bad news. <clears throat> anyway, I'm trying to decide what I want to do as far as plague measures. What I might do is just see where plague pops up, because there is a chance it could just appear in the middle of a uh, in the middle of my territory, and if that happens. I don't know what I'm going to do, but we'll see. Uh, let's see. Where did Plague show up? 
don't see it yet. Oh, should have known. Yeah, it popped up in Flanders. You can see it's already killed off a lot of people. Let's gonna jump along the coast, jump through the interior. Ooh, Paris. Oh, Paris. Oh man, they just lost half their population. It's actually relatively historical. Um, oh, that means that the biggest city in the continent could be up for grabs. All right, so since it appeared up there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take plague measures. Um, I'm going to restrict ports. Or, excuse me, restrict my trade. So if I restricted ports, um, it would prevent plague from jumping along the coast. Since it's all the way up here, the only way it's going to get down to me in any kind of meaningful state is if it comes by center of center of trade. If it tried to come through through Spain, it would be slowed down because um, there's so many dead people already that the plague doesn't travel unless there's a densely populated area. So I'm going to discuss restricting trade. What sucks is that burgers do not like that, and I have lots of them. Um, you see, I can offer compensation. It's a pretty steep price, um, but they'll agree to do it without possibly throwing a hissy fit. You see, they'll lose loyalty otherwise, and a crisis could occur, and a crisis is bad, so I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to offer them compensation to nerf the bonuses on my centers of trade. But this will uh, cut the chance that Plague will show up in half. And when it does show up, it'll reduce the strength. Um, we have other Plague measures. Um, we could consider training Plague Doctors. Yeah, it's... I need the legitimacy though. Um, first plague is always the worst. Oh god, that's so expensive though. I'll go with the first option, why not? Just in case. Plague doctors take some time to train. So you can't just do it the second plague shows up on your on your shore. What? Peasants crossed over? You're not here to stay, are you? No, I didn't think so. Oh my god. Okay, it's not too strong. Man, that sucks. So, I can quarantine Granada, and that would basically cause massive damage to the city itself, but prevent it from sp spreading as easily. I'm not going to do that because Granada is like the only city left aside from Malak that has any population. So, no, I'm going to be humane. And now we're just waiting for the damage to kick in. Ah, that wasn't too bad. I guess shutting down the ports and plague doctors, etc. helped quite a bit. And plague has killed 5%. Like I... Like I can afford to lose the manpower. Okay, I didn't lose any stability. That's a bonus. But now it's oh god. Like, oh, like I really needed this. Uh, Malacca wasn't hit too bad. I'm gonna possibly. T <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, the good news is, make that 40 or 50 years that Castile is gonna suffer yeah you can see that you can see that Castile is so beat up that they uh, the plague didn't even make it very far inland even though there's at least there was roads I thought there was roads yeah there's roads in a few places but population is so diffuse at this point that it, it can't even penetrate you see there's a little aura of blue a little irritated that plague didn't make it to Portugal though did make it a little bit into Aragon. All right, well that's a relief. I didn't lose any. I didn't lose any stability yet. 
And Castile has another Civil War. Interesting tidbit. Um, so, the way that we calculate uh, communication efficiency is um, is different than before, and so now we can actually calculate exact distance between two ports. And so, you'll notice that CE is uh, is really really good in Seville because. Um, basically, runners go from Malak, the port, get on a ship, and then go to Seville rather than having to go through um, Akija. And uh, the distance that it, that it is determines uh, how quickly the runner gets there, which is, I think it's only a two-day trip from Malak to, to uh, Seville. So, interesting little detail. Anyway, yeah, that was some fun play. Let's look around the world and see. It looks like it jumped from Granada throughout the coast. Um, I made it all the way over to Tunisia. Uh, it looks like it made it to Italy, too. They didn't get hit too hard. Usually, plague is much worse the, first, the very first wave, but it looks like a lot of places got spared. It couldn't even get out to more remote places like Poland or Lithuania. Um, looks like it made it to Novogorod because it's a center of trade. Um, otherwise, though, Germany didn't get too bad. France, man, they got murdered. England's, they got hit pretty hard, too. Didn't make it up to Scotland, barely to Ireland. Yeah. Ooh, made it to Cairo, too, it looks like. Yeah, because Cairo is... Major city, major center of trade. Anyway, that was plague. It looks like the Ottomans are having some issues. Okay, so next time something interesting happens, I'll restart.